Hello friends, welcome to, or welcome back to the farmhouse table. All right, I'm gonna tell you this now. I'm gonna do a little cheesecake recipe and this is the easiest cheesecake and it's so delicious and it's totally interchangeable. So you could change the crust, you can change the topping that you use on top of the cheesecake or you can just keep it plain. So super easy, perfect for the holidays, we're having company tomorrow night, so I wanna go ahead and get the cheesecake started today so it can refrigerate, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, here are the ingredients for the super awesome cheesecake. You will need two eight ounce packages of cream cheese that are softened, one can, I believe it's 14 ounces, of sweetened condensed milk, two sleeves of graham crackers, white sugar, one stick of butter, vanilla, lemon juice, and three eggs. And when I do the topping, I'm actually going to be making the topping tomorrow and I'll show you those ingredients tomorrow. But you can do any kind of topping that you want. But this cranberry cheesecake, ooh, child. All right, so the first thing that I did was prepare my springform pan. I went ahead and sprayed it really well with nonstick spray. And then I also um, foil the bottom. It's been said that it helps it cook evenly, but I actually do it because I don't shy <laughs> with the butter and the crust. So just in case it leaks a little bit, I wanna make sure that we're not dripping butter in the oven. So I went ahead and sprayed it and went ahead and put the foil on. So now we're gonna work on our crust. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get a bowl and I'm going to pop my one stick of butter in it or a half a cup. I'm telling you, this, this cheesecake, every time I make it, everybody loves it. Um, I do really like a nice buttery thick crust. So that's why we're using two sleeves. All right, I'm gonna pop this in the microwave to melt it. Okay, so I have my one stick of butter melted in my bowl. Now, of course, you can use a food processor to break up your graham crackers. I just beat them. <laughs> just beat them. You can also buy it where, you know, you can buy graham cracker crumbs in a box, but it's like double the price. So we're just going to do it the old fashioned way. All right, so I'm just gonna start stirring this together. Now, the consistency that you ultimately want is like a wet sand, not wet, but like a sand texture where you can press it and it kind of stays. Now, I'll tell you, you can see that, yes, there are chunks of graham cracker. It's not all perfectly sand. It doesn't have to be. Did you know that? Um, so I'm just gonna give this a little stir first and then, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Yeah, we are not measuring that. And stir. And then I'm going to grab my sugar. And I'm going to add one third cup of sugar. All right, here we go. Now, there's also something interesting that I don't know that a lot of people do, but I do with my cheesecakes. So some people bake their crust a little bit first, uh, like before they add the filling. And then some people just, you know, put the unbaked crust, you know, and put the, the top, hello, the filling <laughs> on top. And what I actually do is I press mine into that spring form pan and I put it in the freezer. Now, why in the world would you do that? So there's a stick of butter in this <laughs> mixture. So what happens is after you press those graham cracker crumbs in, the fat from the butter starts hardening and it forms a really good crust. And when you put it in frozen and put the um, cream, the cheesecake, on top, like the filling on top, and bake it, the crust doesn't burn. Well, looky there, isn't that special? All right, so this looks like it's well mixed to me. So I've got my pan here, 
I'm just gonna plop it in. Now, I do really like to press the crust in. I really like it condensed, like a good crisp, like when you cut into it and it makes perfect slices, I feel like when you really push that crust in, it makes a real big difference. So I'm just starting by spreading this out. And then I'm gonna go in with my clean hands and press. And when you press, it definitely takes it down you know, like a half an inch or something like that. Really get, I, I, and I really try to get all the, like, outside of the crust flattened. And this is perfect. It's not too, like, wet and it's not too dry. So it's like nice sand that pushes down when you use your hands. All right, this looks awesome. All right, one last little press. <laughs> I always like make sure, you know, perfect. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'm gonna pop this into the freezer. All right, so now we're gonna get started on our cheesecake filling. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is grab my cream cheese. And I'm going to, I'm trying to get a good angle for you all to see. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and plop these into my mixer. I know it doesn't, it's not necessarily pleasing to hear a mixer on YouTube videos. So I'll try to, I don't know, I'll speed it up or something. All right, and you really wanna make sure you get all of that cream cheese because a lot of that sticks to the wrapper and we can't have that. We need all the goodness. Okay. Whoops. All right, let me pop open the other one. So I might end up too. So we have uh, Christmas night is when we have my side of the family come over. And so I may do a cheesecake for Christmas night. But there's different ways you can do it. You can use ginger snap cookies for the crust instead of um, graham cracker crumbs. I have done all kinds of cheesecake. Oh my gosh, there's all different kinds of combinations. You can use an Oreo crust. Any kind of cookie, really, you can do. You can do a chocolate chip cookie dough cheesecake with chocolate chip crust. Mm, that sounds good though. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this started here. Okay, now I'm going to scrape down my sides a little bit here. And then I'm going to add, because I really want to make sure that it gets, like I don't want any lumps. And I'm going to, Pour in my sweetened condensed milk next. Ooh, that's thick. <laughs> I didn't know if it was gonna come out. All right, let me get my rubber scraper here. I knew somebody that used sweetened condensed milk on their pancakes instead of syrup. I don't know about that. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of sugar, but then isn't syrup the same thing? So anyway, have any of y'all done that before? Not me. All right, let's give this a mix. All right, I'm gonna scrape my sides one more time because I can see there is a couple lumps Right, I always like to be sure, you know? I don't like to rush, take my time, and I like to be sure that everything's good. Good, 
good. That looks awesome. I just realized I have stuff all over my hands. I'm just wipe that off real quick. And then I have to add my three eggs. So I'm going to definitely break the eggs. You can't see. Here we go. Um, into this measuring cup to make sure I don't get any shells. All right, no shells. Let me give my hands a little wash. All right, so I am going to next add my vanilla. Again, we put a teaspoon of vanilla in the crust. I'm just gonna add a little to the filling. That looks like a teaspoon. That's right. <laughs> I don't measure sometimes. I do measure sometimes. Sometimes I measure. All right, so I have my one teaspoon of vanilla in there, and then I'm gonna add one fourth cup of lemon juice. I like to use real lemon juice. Um, I actually order this online from Amazon. You can see it. It's organic lemon juice. This is actually what I use on my avocado toast. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start mixing this and then I'm gonna start adding one egg at a time. Okay. I am going to have a look at this. Give it a little scrape, make sure we don't have any chunks. We shouldn't. Looks good. Okay. I'm gonna go grab that crust out of the freezer. It does not take long. All you do is want the fats in the butter to harden in that crust. Okay, this looks awesome. Just gonna remove this. I always use the whisk attachment too for the um, cheesecakes, just because you don't want those lumps in there. All right, I'm going to, oh, by the way, I have my oven preheated on 300 degrees. Now, let me see if I can get this machinery out of the way <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. There's that, move that. All right, there's a handle so I can actually pour it in so you can see how fluffy. Ooh, look at that. Mmm. She's a pretty cheesecake. And then I'm just gonna scrape the sides. I feel like I have to start whispering, I don't know why. Just because it looks so good. All right. Beautiful. Now, some people do a water bath for their cheesecake. I'm gonna just tell you, I don't. You know, most of the times there's no cracks in the cheesecake. I don't know if it's my oven or what it is. And then sometimes there may be a crack, but you know what the good point of this whole thing is, is there's gonna be a topping. So it won't matter because I'll hide it. All right, so this is going to go in a 300 degree oven for 50 to 55 minutes. Well, looky here. Cheesecake just came out of the oven. It looks perfect. So I'm gonna let it cool off on the counter for a little while and then it will go in the refrigerator overnight. And then I will see you tomorrow to add the cranberry topping. It's the next morning. Here are the ingredients to top our cheesecake. Cornstarch, orange juice, and cranberry sauce. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I plopped my cranberry sauce in the saucepan. Now you could use jellied or the whole cranberry, but I'm just using the jelly. And I'm just gonna take a whisk and I'm just gonna break the cranberry sauce up. So we're basically just trying to melt the cranberry sauce essentially. <laughs> Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do next, just to give it some more liquid, is I'm going to add about a half a cup of orange juice. And just kind of let that go over medium heat until this turns into a nice liquid, then we're gonna see where we're at. So now I'm gonna go in with my other half cup 
of orange juice, just like so. Now, our cornstarch is only to thicken up if we need to for our sauce. So it, all that's in here is the one uh, can of, I use jelly cranberry sauce, and then one cup of orange juice. I just like to do it a half a cup at a time. It just depends. Sometimes cranberry sauce can be a little bit more dense. Sometimes it's a little bit more liquidy. So I'm just going to keep this on medium heat and I'm just gonna keep stirring it, not constantly, but once in a while. I may not have to use the, um, the cornstarch at all, but we'll see. I'm just gonna let it cook down. Now, if I do need to use the cornstarch or you need to use the cornstarch, all you would do is take about, really about a fourth of a cup or so of orange juice and put about two teaspoons of cornstarch in and you would mix that in a separate bowl and then add that to um, your pot. That would help thicken it up. We may not have to do it. I'm just gonna let this cook down a little bit and we're gonna see where we're at. Okay, so I've had my cranberry sauce and orange juice, which smells amazing. It smells like Christmas, just mm. um, Just simmering on my stove on medium heat for about five minutes. So I am going to go ahead and do the cornstarch slurry um, because this is liquidy and as it cools, it will thicken a little bit, but I really wanna make sure instead of a liquid, I get that gelatinous kind of layer on top of the cheesecake. So. I'm going to grab my liquid measuring cup here. Let me just tap that a little bit. I'm gonna grab my orange juice and just add just like a fourth of a cup or so. That should be good. And then I'm going to do about two teaspoons. Let me see. There we go. Yes, I'm measuring, I know, whatever. Some days you do, some days you don't. All right, one teaspoon, two teaspoons. If you ever do a cornstarch slurry, you wanna make sure that the liquid that you're putting the cornstarch in is cold or it's going to get lumpy. All right, so now I'm just gonna whisk this together. As you can see, my Cranberry sauce is bubbling away, smelling delicious. I just wanna make sure I get all the lumps. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here. And that is going to thicken up pretty quick. And of course, as it cools, like I said, it will also thicken up. All right, this looks so good. So I'm just gonna let this cook for about another five minutes. Okay, so this sauce has been boiling for about five minutes after I added that cornstarch slurry. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm just gonna let it cool down. I mean, not completely, but mostly. So it thickens up and I just don't wanna pour hot liquid over my cheesecake either. All right, this was a viewer request. Um, she had suggested brown butter rice treats. And so that's what we're gonna do. I found a recipe, but of course, I gotta do my own thing, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, so here are the ingredients. I have two bags, which we won't use a total of two bags, of mini marshmallows, a stick and a half of salted butter, vanilla, pink Himalayan salt, or you could use, use kosher salt, heavy whipping cream, light brown sugar, uh, rice cereal, and then I went ahead and prepared my 9 by 13 pan with foil, nonstick spray, and then I put, I showed you the spoon there because I also put nonstick spray on the spoon. All right, so we are going to get started on these brown butter rice treats. The first thing I'm going to do, I already went ahead and sprayed some nonstick spray in my pot here. So I'm going to put a stick and a half of butter in here. You may hear some furniture moving. Mr. Joey is setting up our living room and dining room for our company for dinner tonight. All right, I'm gonna put my burner on medium high. There we go, stick and a half. And I'm just going to let this completely melt.
All right, the butter has melted, so now I'm going to go ahead and add half of a cup, yes, I measured, yay, of brown sugar. Mix that in. Now you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep stirring this mixture because we do not want it to burn. And I've turned my heat down to like just below medium. And then I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of heavy cream. This is heavy whipping cream. Okay. I'll turn my heat up just a little bit. Okay. We're essentially trying to make like a little bit of a caramel sauce and browning the butter at the same time. So we want this nice and bubbly. And then I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. That looks good. And now I'm just gonna keep this on medium heat. I'm gonna stir it for about seven minutes. Okay, this has been on the stove for about seven minutes. It smells freaking amazing. All right, then I'm gonna use pink Himalayan salt. Let me tell you this, I used, let me keep stirring. I used salted butter. So I'm only gonna add about a, um, excuse me, about an eighth of a teaspoon of this. I mean, I'm just gonna do a couple of turns on the grinder. Um, but if you're using unsalted butter, then I would say a fourth of a teaspoon. All right, there we go. Add that, stir it in, and then I'm going to remove this from the heat. All right, I removed the caramel sauce from the heat, and now I'm going to add one bag of marshmallows, and we're gonna we're gonna melt those in that sauce. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't imagine that this wouldn't be good. <laughs> so I think we're on the right track. Um, now, if this doesn't melt, this is the, my first time making this. I will be adding it, putting it back on the heat, which I think I'm going to do because, yeah, it said to take it off the heat, but I'm thinking we might need it. All right, let me just give it another second. Maybe I'm just being impatient. I definitely have marshmallows trapped in here. That's fun. I thought they would melt a little bit quicker. All right, we're going on the heat. Come with us. There we go. I'm just gonna put the stove on low and just keep mixing this until, I'll tell you, it's it, this is very fluffy. Um, it's really interesting texture. It's gonna be so good. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is so good. I cannot wait to try this. All right, I've gotta get some of these marshmallows out of my whisk. Maybe use a spoon, but I really like using a whisk just to kind of break things up. Gosh, this looks amazing. It's almost melted. So the next thing we're gonna be added, uh, adding is the rice cereal and then some additional marshmallows because why not? But I will be mixing that with a spoon instead of a whisk. There, see now it's coming out of the whisk. That's what I was looking for. All right, let me turn my heat off. Oh my goodness. It's like, it's close to the regular recipe of making Rice Krispie treats, but this is just so elevated. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my cereal. About eight cups. Yeah, that's right. I'm not measuring. Okay. And I have my spoon that I sprayed with non-stick spray. 
And we're gonna toss this together for a second. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I like to just go on, you know, give it a stir, see if you need to add more uh, cereal or just leave it as it is. I think it tastes better when it's not so dry. Ooh, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna add just a little bit more cereal. And then I'm going to also add about two cups of marshmallows. So now we're gonna have those marshmallow chunks in there too. Oh man, here we go. Mr. J's is gonna be like, yes indeed. <laughs> All right. Yes, looking good over here. Just want to make sure I get all the brown butter marshmallow gooeyness from the bottom. Oh my goodness. This looks awesome. All done in one pot. Yes. Okay. Wow. I'm going to grab... I'm eating it off my hands. Okay, I'm gonna grab the pan and let's just get it transferred. All right, here's my pan. I lined it with foil, lots of nonstick spray, nine by 13. We're gonna give it a plop here. Oh, there we go. Oh, somebody's here. Kodiak, it's okay. It's a Saturday and Joey's family, well, and my family, comes to visit. Okay, I'm just gonna push this to the sides. Oh my goodness, wow. Now, I'm gonna show you what I do next. Okay, let me grab some parchment paper. So, I've got my parchment paper. Sorry, that was probably really loud. And I'm gonna press down on my rice treats. When they are really condensed in there, they cut a lot better and they're just a lot more dense and delicious. I feel like I'm giving it CPR. Oh my goodness. And then I'm going to remove this. See, it's parchment paper, it doesn't really stick, so you can really push down on it. This looks phenomenal. So the reason why I put the foil is uh, on the bottom is because after it cools down, I like to flip this out on a cutting board and cut them up into squares instead of leaving them in here. All right, this looks so good. And we are back with this cheesecake. It looks so incredibly perfect very pale in the center and a little golden around the edges. It's perfect. Okay, I've got my cranberry and orange sauce that has been sitting, you can see right here, sitting on the counter, thickening up and cooling down. Ooh, let's pour it. Now, if I have extra, I can put it in like a little gravy boat and you can pour extra on your cheesecake. <laughs> can you tell my mouth is watering as I'm talking? Okay. And I love how cheesecake kind of comes up on the sides when it bakes, so it makes like a little spot for the sauce to sit. Cause I don't really want the sauce to go over the sides. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Woo wee. I just try to get the maximum amount Within it overflows, it's not gonna like, you know, ruin my day, you know? All right, that looks amazing. This is going back in the refrigerator so that this can cool down and it'll get like, because of the cornstarch, it'll get nice and gelatinous. And when you cut it, it will just cut perfectly. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> All right, we are having our party tonight with our friends and family. We've have two taste testers. <laughs> They're ready. They're gonna try the brown butter <laughs> rice crispy treats. Go girls, come on. <laughs> Tell me how good they are, even if they taste like garbage. Mm. Yeah, no. they're better than the original. Oh, good. Awesome. All right, and there's a cheesecake. We're getting ready to cut into it. 
these recipes were absolutely delicious i really hope that you give them a try oh my goodness that was such a fun night and i am not upset that we have a little bit of cheesecake left over for tonight i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know if you have any video suggestions have a blessed one bye